On the west bank of the scenically beautiful Hudson River, about 50 miles from New York City, there is a picturesque region in which has been founded the United States Military Academy, better known as West Point. A little more than a century and a half ago, this historic region was claimed by Great Britain as crown property. And at the outbreak of the Revolutionary War, both the colonists and the British realized its importance as a natural setting for a military fortification. During its long and brilliant career, West Point has graduated thousands of young men who later distinguished themselves in the service of their country. And here at Cullum Hall, we meet that type of American manhood, which has been and continues to be a great credit to the honor and glory of West Point. Today, over 50% of all its graduates since 1802 are now on active duty in the Army of the United States. Conspicuously centered among the gray stone buildings of this historic institution is the administration building housing the executive offices of the garrison. The oldest of the academic buildings is the library, modeled along the lines of a feudal castle and regarded as one of the world's finest examples of Gothic architecture. Consistently harmonizing with the architectural design of West Point are the homes of the officers, most of whom are graduates who have returned to the academy as instructors in the various academic courses. Of all the buildings at West Point, the Cadet's Chapel is perhaps the most picturesque. From the ramparts of Fort Putnam, which stands today as it did in 1778, we behold the strongest of the forts that comprised the defenses of West Point during the American Revolution. A silent reminder of trying days which have passed into the annals of history. Another old landmark is the superintendent's headquarters and residence, built about 1820. It has been the home of many distinguished officers of the United States Army, who have returned to West Point as superintendents of the military academy, not the least of whom was General Robert E. Lee, who resided here from 1852 until 1855. The chief duty of the superintendent is to supervise the training of future officers of the American Army from the day of their arrival at West Point until the day of their graduation four years later. In the well-kept garden of this historic estate, it is our pleasure to meet Brigadier General R.L. Eichelberger, the man who was superintendent of West Point at the time of our visit. Today being July 1st, the day on which new cadets enter the military academy, the general is concerned about the group of appointees who are now arriving at West Point Station. After passing a rigid physical examination, these young men are quickly converted from civilians to cadets. And in the transition, they are assigned to a company on the basis of their height. In the tactical training of cadets, there is a detachment of the regular Army Air Corps stationed at West Point, and in keeping with the spirit of the times, it is the ambition of most of the young men to be appointed to the Army Air Force. The first steps are taken in the making of a cadet a bit abruptly and with startling speed. So many instructions are hurled at him that instant obedience is the only course open to him. He rapidly learns the first law of the soldier, obedience prompt, willing, and unquestioning obedience. Besides the intensive studies in classroom and laboratory, the cadets are taught military tactics from the small units up to the regiment. At the end of five weeks, during which the new cadets have had an intensive course of drilling that constitutes initiation into the military academy, they are transferred from barracks to Camp Clinton, a city of tents, 
located in the northeast corner of the parade ground. Here they spend a couple of months under canvas, broken only by a five-day plebe hike. The plebes will look back upon this as the happiest period during their first year at the academy, as they are away from the upper classmen and are not under the strict supervision that awaits them upon their return to the academy proper. Although a special swimming pool is at their disposal, this is a common occurrence at the close of an unusually hot day. In the hills overlooking the academy, artificial lakes have been created for the aquatic diversions of the cadets, as well as for the officers and their families. Cadets are encouraged to engage in all types of sports, as the primary purpose of the West Point system is to make every cadet an athlete of diversified accomplishments. The most romantic portion of West Point Reservation is the Enchanting Pathway, a good half mile in length, known as Flirtation Walk. This walk is off limits to cadets in the evening and to plebes at all times. placed in front of Thayer Hall is a monument to the memory of Colonel Sylvanus Thayer, father of the Military Academy, who was superintendent from 1817 to 1833. of strife and confusion with the whole world trembling in the throes of war. We Americans thank God for West Point, for here is symbolized the spirit of a nation that has never suffered defeat.